Hi, thanks again for joining me on another Bible talk. Now this talk, it's called the new land of God's blessings. So I've just been encouraged, maybe just last few days or a couple of weeks in my Bible study, when I've just been reading, going through the book of Genesis again, and just seeing how, excuse me, <laughs> Uh, just seeing how God's blessed uh, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and how God's blessings, they kind of cascaded down the line. So God wants us and as individuals to be blessed and as, a ch as churches to be blessed so that we can cascade this blessing down and bless other people. So what I'd like to do is, it's just as I came to the end of the book of Genesis. So it's Genesis chapter 50, and I'm reading. It's obviously just Joseph with his, his with conclusion, because we, we know about the life of Joseph, how he was betrayed by his brothers, and uh, when he was in Egypt, he had ups and downs. But things kind of like ended on a high, isn't it? When, because uh, Jacob has just sort of passed on, and then Joseph, he's addressing his brother. So I'd like to read from verse 20 to 26, and just to really find blessings that God gave to Joseph and his family, and also, I believe, through Abraham, because we have Abrahamic blessings through Jesus Christ. If it, if we've accepted him, we are brought in to the blessings of Abraham now as a church. And uh, those blessings are for us as well. So, uh, oh, and it's they're not exactly the same because this specific blessing was just for the land of Israel. But it's a typology of the blessings that we have in a new land, which I'll, I'll be going into. So reading from verse 20 says, Joseph speaking to his brothers, but as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Now therefore fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. And Joseph dwelt in Egypt he and his father's house, and Joseph lived a hundred and ten years. And when Joseph saw Ephraim's children of the third generation, the children also of Machir, the son of Manasseh, were brought up upon Joseph's knees. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die, and God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry my bones from hence. So Joseph died, being a hundred and ten years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. Amen. So we know how Joseph in his time in Egypt, yes, he had ups and downs, isn't he? Potiphar's house knew God's blessings, but then through no fault of his own, found himself in prison. But then he was back at the palace and then as a chief administrator for all the corn when he interpreted Pharaoh's dream. So Joseph, he knew the success. And then, of course, eventually his brothers came over and Joseph was mightily used of God to bring them blessing. Talk about how he dwelt in Egypt and his father's house. And then he saw his children. So Joseph was blessed. Topsy, we can see how Joseph was blessed by God to be a blessing to others by administering food during the famine. Because it says, God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. And then, so Joseph, he knew blessings in that situation, but he could see into the future. 
And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die, and God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he sware to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. So God, he is talking about future blessings, says God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he swore to Abram, to Isaac, and to Jacob. So in a sense, it's like a new land. It's obviously the promised land wasn't Egypt. There's a new land that God was going to bring them into. And obviously through the nation of Israel, as we know, other nations would be blessed through Jesus as their Messiah and our Saviour. And they talked about like you know, Jesus being that light, Israel, Jesus being that light to the Gentiles. So that was a cascaded blessing. But we see it's the new land that Joseph declared that his people would enter. And it says, it's the land which he swore, this is God, he swore to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob. So it's an old blessing. So it's a new land they're going to go into. But that's based on the old declaration to Abraham. So as God was blessing Abraham, that blessing would then be cascaded from Abraham to Isaac. That same blessing cascaded from Isaac to Jacob, then from Jacob to Joseph and his brothers. So it's God's presence and his blessings, past, present and future. And God's got this new land for Joseph and his brothers. In the sense that uh, you're going to, because obviously Joseph, he could see beyond, he could see beyond Egypt, even though he was about to die. He wanted his bones to be carried into the new land because he knew that God had something greater. Maybe he couldn't see everything. And just as God was blessing Joseph and his brothers and Israel, God wants to bless us in the same way with a new land. Maybe for you, it's maybe a church or your ministry, maybe new opportunities, maybe in your job, how God wants to bring you the new land of blessings so you can declare God to other people, maybe in your family, in your witness, in your ministry. Look for that new land that God wants to bring you to. And just as the blessings were cascaded through Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and Joseph, etc., etc., let those blessings of God come, the same blessing of God come through you just to bless other people. Let it come through me to bless other people. Yeah, so this is God's new land of blessing. Yeah, he says, the Bible says he can do more than we can ask or imagine. So if you're a Christian, if you know Jesus, God's got blessings planned for you. Yeah, there'll be ups and downs as with Joseph. But when you're listening to God, he can then bring you to your new land. Hopefully bring me to my new land, new lands of blessings, even though the ups and downs, because obviously we know that Israel, they would be delivered from Egypt, but obviously it would be under an adverse situation because we knew in Exodus there's going to be a new Pharaoh who oppressed the children of Israel. And it was from that God sent Moses to deliver them. So they'd go through a bad time before being delivered. And then, of course, they had the long trek through the wilderness. Was it the 40 years or so in the wilderness before getting to the promised land? So yet there'll always be ups and downs. But if you can see beyond them, see God's purposes, he has that new land of blessing for you. He has the new land of blessings for me. Yet he wants to use us then to bring the original Abrahamic blessing just to other people. Okay, so thanks for uh, following me on this Bible talk. I trust it's blessed you and you've enjoyed it. If so, maybe you'd like to share it with some of your friends. Yeah, so thanks for following me on this Bible talk and uh, God bless you.